friends in this video we will be demonstrating to operate a distal tibial fracture using a knee frame designed by dr sancheti this is a 65 year elderly lady with all comorbid condition with osteoporotic fracture of very distal tibia fibula this is a very distal fracture tibia fibula uh, it's a lower fourth or even lower fifth just about one inch of the distal tibial fragment is available for locking we are going to demonstrate uh, interlocking nailing in this patient the patient is positioned with knee flex to 90 degree on a frame which has been designed by dr sancheti and uh, i am going to demonstrate the technique of distal tibial nail on this frame this is the knee support which can be used for tibia nailing as well as for uh, knee joint replacement which can be kept at different angles as per our convenience a 1.5 cm long incision over the inferior pole of patella is taken splitting the patella tendon in line i am making an entry over the extra articular portion in the top of the tibia and curving the out to enter into the medullary canal you can see that the marrow fluid is coming indicating that i have entered into the medullary canal going to ream the proximal fragment up to the isthmus with a straight puncture reamer before passing the guide wire This is the 10 mm reamer. I have reamed the isthmus and just beyond the isthmus. I am passing the simple guide wire into the proximal canal and I will reduce the fracture and pass it across the distal fragment. Now I will take the leg on the CM and find out the guide wire position. I will put it across. Ah. Now the guide wire is in the distal fragment. I am going to pass a fibula wire. The reason why I am doing like this is, if I pass the fibula either the nail or plate first, then I try to negotiate the guide wire. The manipulation will cause fixation loss of the fibula. So I have first passed the fibula. Uh, uh, sorry, I have first passed the tibial guide wire first now i am going to fix the fibula over the tip of the fibula i am just making a small stab incision and with a owl i am entering into the fibular malleolus this is a screw intramedal nail or the thalar nail which I was able to negotiate easily across the fracture site because of the bevel tip and this screw portion I am tightening in the fibula. shoot this is the guide wire in ap and the guide wire passed across the fracture site and with the owl we are trying to make an entry for the fibula wire and this is the talon nail out into the fibula which has just crossed the fracture site both in ap and lateral view and this is the final seating of the screw portion of the talon nail in the fibula and well reduced fibular fracture this is the 
screw intermediary nail or the talon nail mainly used for fibula fixation which has got screw at one end and a beveled end at the other end which can be used to negotiate smaller bones like radius and clavicle and once we do the fixation in the bone the nail won't come out that's the advantage of this screw intramedullary nail now the guide wire is inside fibula has been fixed with a intramedullary nail now i'll take back and do the nailing you can see that the fracture has a valgus tendency and the guide wire has gone more medially i would have loved to go somewhere in the center so what i am going to do is put a blocking screw medial to this wire so that the nail will be seated in this part so this i am passing a k wire first and if required i'll replace that with a polar screw later after doing the locking this is the guide wire in ap there is a valgus still present at the fracture site and the guide wire is placed more medially not in the center so we are passing a k wire as polar medial to the guide wire this is the wire i am passing just medial to the guide wire to act as a polar what i am going to do is going medial to the wire and feeling the wire and trying to push it laterally shoot this is the k wire which is pushing the guide wire more laterally and being advanced to the far cortex this is in lateral view the same picture this is a nail i have selected a 10 mm thickness and 32 mm in length which has got very distal interlocking at 90 90 to one another slotted hammer now the nail has gone beyond the k wire i am seating the nail subcontrally seeing under cm shoot 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 this is the nail being advanced from the top entering the fracture site this has just entered the fracture site just above the polar wire and it has come near the polar wire and now we can see that the polar wire is pushing the nail outward and the nail is going in the center of the distal fragment both in ap as well as in lateral picture and this is the final position of the seating of the nail okay. now i have seated the nail subcontrally in the distal fragment i would love to do distal locking first for which i cannot extend the knee fully because of the jig and the nail what i am going to do is i will do dynamic locking and i will put a steenman pin in the static hole then do the distal locking then remove that static locking so that i will be able to extend the knee to do proper distal locking otherwise i have to take the cm in mean, very oblique position which is uh, not very convenient to do so hence i am going to remove the jig proximally after doing proximal locking then i am going to proceed to do the distal locking mosquito drill slip drill i am going to do the proximal dynamic locking okay 
This is the proximal locking. Confirming that the screw is inside by guide wire sounding technique. This is the Steenman pin into the static locking hole. I have done dynamic locking with the bolt. I have fixed the Steenman pin in the static hole. Now I will remove the jig and do the distal locking. Now we can see that I can extend the leg because the jig is out. I am doing the distal interlocking by freehand technique. Shoot. Hmm. I am passing the 34 millimeter bolt selected by freehand technique. Shoot. 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 Okay, knife. Shoot. Hammer. Shoot. Very good. Drill. I am now drilling the far cortex. Okay. I am passing the 36 millimeter bolt medial lateral locking mosquito this is the freehand anteroposterior locking for the distal most interlocking screw and the final seating of the screw and this is the anteroposterior locking as well as the medial lock medial lateral locking with well reduced fracture. Now I have done both anteroposterior and medial lateral distal locking and this is the polar wire I am removing and definitely it is adding to the stability hence I will be replacing this with a 3.9 millimeter bolt in the same tract. This is the 3.9 millimeter 34 millimeter bolt. knife shoot this is the polar K wire which has been replaced with a 3.9 millimeter locking bolt. This is the AP very well reduced. Lateral there is slight procurvatum deformity. We could improve this by putting a polar screw above here but it is too near the fracture site hence we are not inserted the polar screw there. Now after having done all the locking we are removing the static locking steenman pin the reason why i have put this is if i had not put this static locking bolt when i removed the jig the nail would have migrated proximally in this fashion give me a nail and screw what i had done was i had done the dynamic locking with the bolt at the proximal most end and i had put a steenman pin 
to prevent the movement of the nail if i had not done this locking after remove the jig the nail would have migrated like this and it would have been in the static mode from day one it's itself to prevent this happening i did dynamic locking and a static locking with a steenman pin and at, after having done the distal locking i have removed the steenman pin the closed wounds uh, you can see that as we have taken the incision very higher up there is no maceration of the skin above these are the proximal dynamic locking this was the steenman pin which was inserted yeah. this is the anteroposterior screw this is the polar screw and this is the medial lateral screw sutures this is the pre operative picture and this is the immediate post operative picture with knee well seated subcondyly anteroposterior locking medial lateral locking as well as the polar bolt which is enhancing the stability the thallon nail fixing the fibula and well seated nail with the proximal dynamic locking in the proximal part of the hole with available dynamization space distal to the locking bolt thank you very much